Matt Lenehan Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight. So I'd like to be joined by Nathan Heaney, British champion. Great fight yourself, Denzel Bentley. You came into this fight with that underdog mentality. I saw you in the press conference, you were like, I know people are writing me off. I know people think he's going to come in, hit me with that right hand, get me out of there. Not a problem. You <laughs> rose to the occasion tonight. Yeah. You fed off the crowd. Talk, talk me through what was an incredible night in your career. Yeah, I, I've got cotton mouth because it feels like I've got cotton mouth. I've got like, no, no, right, okay, you, you okay. Because I always wipe my mouth because I, I did an interview once, I had two white cotton balls there. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, on the way up, someone put on it on one of my posts, I put a bet on your son, come on. I was a nine to one underdog. I was like nine to one. Someone told me twelve somewhere else. So I was like, I, honestly, if it was legal, I'd have put a grand on myself tonight. So I was going. I, I would love. I would have loved to, but but it, but you can't. So I didn't. But anyway, um, yeah. Listen, I've I've never said what I think I could do. I always thought to myself, I could become a British champion. I always did think that. And then when obviously I got Denzel Bentley, I was thinking bloody hell. I could have got an easier British title than Denzel Bentley, who's obviously... Legitimate a, British a, champion. A, a two-time British champion who would have owned it outright tonight against me. But I knew I was better than the last two lads that he boxed. Not Yanni Beck, I'm talking about these two British title fights. Although they're great fighters, I knew I was better than them. And I, and I knew the mistake that they made. They held the feet with Bentley. If you hold your feet with him, he's going to knock you out. I felt the power tonight. He's very strong. But... But I think I made him respect me as well, like in, with some of the shots I hit, I hit him. But yeah, it's one of them, mates. I've achieved something I, I've probably, I'd say I've dreamt about, but I don't think I've dreamt about it until probably three years ago. What was, what was your dream? You know, when you talk to a boxer, like, oh, I want to be a world champion. Or about you mentioned starting my career six years ago, I thought we'd have a go at it. But you've, you've achieved such a lot in this space of time and with your backing, your following. Like, what, what was the goal for you when, on, when you started this journey? The goal for me was just to see what I could do. I said to Louise, my wife, who wasn't my wife at the time, my fiance. I just said, listen, give me three years. I was a teacher, I was a full-time teacher at the time. So give me three years, because I was 27 at the time. I didn't want to have any regrets, because in three years' time, I'd have been 30 and I'd have been too late, maybe. I said, give me three years and I'll see what I can do. Well, three years in, I won the IBO Continental. It sold out King's Hall. My first ever fight sold 60 tickets, but it was sold out at the King's Hall. And then three weeks later, I got signed by Frank, so she was like, bloody hell, it's going to go a bit longer, this career is. <laughs> and, then, and, and then obviously, I had my apprenticeship with Frank when my first contract, and, and I come through that, and then he signed me again, mm -hmm. and then he just kept going, and then the fights got a little bit harder. Then I had Jack Flatley, and then I had Denzel Bentley. I was like, bloody hell, Denzel Bentley. I was like, oh my God. Like, but listen, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be straight, 10 weeks ago, I had a vision in my head. I was looking down from the crowd, from the upper tier, and I was on the canvas. It put me down. And I was thinking, it was just a weird, like, negative mindset that I had. But then, but then as the weeks went on, and I was sparring, I was getting better, and I was getting fitter, then all of a sudden, the, 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 that started changing. I was catching my shots. I was putting him on his arse, or I was making him look silly. Yeah. That's a full on like 360 manifestation. Normally people say, you know, I envision holding the belt, I envision doing this. You had, you had the opposite and had to like physically oh, yeah. change it through yeah. camp. I, like I say, I was looking from the crowd's perspective and I was on my knee and he put me down. And I was like, I was like, fucking hell. And in fact, I just sparred George Davey, who was like two weights below me, and he boxed me ears off. It was my first spar back, this about 10, 12 weeks ago. I was thinking, you know, if he's spar boxing me head off, Bentley's going to absolutely rip me to shreds. But anyway, <laughs> as the weeks went on, I was improving, and sparring was getting better. I was sparring with Ryan Kelly, Tyler Denny, who's become the European champion. Yeah, shout out Tyler. Tyler Denny. Ramsey Moose was one of the best GB amateurs. I was having great sparring and doing well as well. And as the weeks went on, I was thinking, I can do this, I believe I can. Well, look, let's just talk about what's next, and I won't keep you too much longer after this because I know you're in a lot of pain. Um, but yeah. you, you must, you must want that city ground like for definite now because we've seen how many people will come this close to Christmas for you on an away day. The yeah. noise they made in there was, it, it's up there. I have yeah. to say with what I've heard now, city ground, Stoke well, City. Well, Stoke, well, to be honest, right before, because Frank's always talk about the British title of the Stoke City ground. Before, it was my supporters that z deserve the fight at the ground. But I think now I've finally made it so hopefully I deserve a fight at the ground as well and we can make something incredible. Like, like say Frank said, the winner will fight for a world title because I know they were lining him to fight Janabek after me. They didn't expect me. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that Frank thought I could do well. And so did George. He said to me, listen, I'm making this fight. I think you can do well. I was like, okay, because I was thinking, I hope he's not trying to get me beat here. Yeah. But anyway, like, but, but yeah, I've just dedicated myself to it and I think I've legitimized myself as a fighter yeah. and let's just see what happens. A contender for a world champ. For yeah, well, there we go, mate. And, and mate, even if I get splattered in the first round, if I fought for a world title, that's more than I ever imagined. And you're going in there full of confidence. Look, um, 
give a message to your fans, the ones who made that journey yeah. up here and send them on. Thank you so much, guys. You are the most incredible supporters. You've backed me all the way. And tonight was phenomenal. And I, and I hope I made you proud because you make me proud every single time. And thank you, guys. Thank you. Nathan, I appreciate your time. Thank you, thank you very much. Man. Thank you.